Snow retention is one of the least talked about yet most crucial components for metal roofing in cold climates. Snow guards, snowbirds, cleats, clips, rails, and fences, all intended for the same important job of keeping heavy chunks of snow and ice from sliding off a metal roof. Today, we're going to take a look at everything you need to know about snow retention for metal roofs. And stick around till the end for the top five do's and don'ts of snow retention systems. This question comes up a lot. Do I really need snow retention for my metal roof? If you're watching this, there's a good chance you're onto the right answer. If you live in an area that gets more than a dusting of snow, no metal roof is complete without a snow retention system, where shingles have built-in texture that grips the snow to help it keep from falling off of a roof. Metal roofing panels are smooth. Even textured panels are not enough to keep the snow from crashing down. That's where snow retention comes in. Snow retention systems are designed to hold snow on the roof until it melts, making sure only small chunks are getting through. But why would I want to keep snow on the roof? Isn't that a good thing to have the snow slide off so I don't have all of that weight on my roof? There may be times where it would be perfectly fine for the snow to slide off, but there are a few dangers to be aware of. But before we get to that, let's talk about the weight. Snow and ice can get really heavy, but today's building code requires roofs to be strong enough to support the weight of that snow and ice. Codes take the ground snow measurements from the worst snow accumulation in the last 50 years and use that to calculate roof snow load. And the structure is designed assuming the snow is not going to slide off. So generally speaking, it's not going to hurt the roof if the snow stays put. Now let's talk about some of the dangers of snow sliding off. As the metal panels heat up from the sun, the snow against the panels begins to melt, which acts as a lubricator for sometimes entire roof loads of snow to slide off. Even a small snow of a few inches can become a crushing weight of a few tons. In residential applications, sliding snow can rip off gutters, crush landscaping, vehicles, and anything in its path. Tragically, many people have died or been seriously injured by sliding snow, something that is easily preventable. Snow slides are also a concern for businesses who are responsible for the safety of their employees and customers. You've got the liability to think about if someone were to get hurt on your property. And don't think that putting up this sign is going to protect you from being sued. In fact, it may even work against you because it proves that you knew about the danger and didn't fix it. When weighing the cost of a snow retention system against the possibility of bodily injury and property damage, the choice is clear. Snow slides not only cause damage as they fall, they can also cause damage to the building. If all the snow slides off at once, it can form a huge pile right next to the structure. If the pile is big enough, it can push in garage doors and steel wall panels. And as the pile melts, suddenly you have water inside the walls, which can cause mold and structural damage over time. Without snow retention, or if it is improperly positioned, snow can slide and crash into the valleys, damaging panels and causing leaks. But properly installed and positioned snow retention systems will ensure that snow remains more evenly distributed so as not to overload any one point on the roof. So the three main reasons to use snow retention are one, safety. Snow retention protects people and pets from crushing snow slides. Two, liability. Keeping the huge chunks on the roof helps protect you from getting sued. And three, damage prevention. Snow retention helps prevent damage to property from the force of falling snow. With so many different kinds of snow retention, how do you know which one is right for your metal roof? Let's break it down by the type of metal roof. Here, we have a standing seam metal roof. This kind of roof is a popular choice for business and residential properties. This is what is known as a concealed fastener roof system, with the clips or nail flange being covered by the next panel. This means there are absolutely no penetrations that are exposed to the weather. There are many snow retention options for standing seam roofs, all of which fit into the two major categories of discontinuous and continuous systems. Discontinuous snow retention systems are often called snow guards. These individual guards are placed in a staggered pattern along the eave of the roof. Here we have the Snow Defender 6500, and 7500 deco. Both of these work for most standing seams or ribs that are up to 3 eighths of an inch wide by one inch to one and three quarters of an inch high. They're both made from heavy gauge stainless steel and powder coated in a variety of popular colors. 
Each type of snow guard is sold as a unit, meaning no additional accessories are needed and all the parts are pre-assembled for a very fast installation. You simply place them on the rib, like so, and tighten the round point set screws. The set screws dimple the panel rib, but they don't puncture it. Remember, the whole point of a hidden fastener roof is to keep it puncture free. So we're not going to screw a snow guard into the flat of the panel or through the rib. Some snow guards use cup point set screws, but that cuts through their protective coating on the metal panels, which can lead to corrosion. Round point set screws dimple the panels where the guards are installed, leaving the coating intact. If this style doesn't fit your panel, the Snow Defender 85 RF is a great option when paired with a roof clamp. Here, I have it paired with the S5S clamp, but you can use whatever clamp best fits your roof panel, and then the 85 RF goes on top. Discontinuous snow guard systems like this have been around for a long time, are highly effective, and have a great aesthetic, which is why it is especially preferred on high-end buildings. And then there are continuous snow retention systems, also known as snow rails or snow fences. Typically, these are aluminum rails attached to clamps or brackets above the eave of the metal roof and are continuous for the entire length of the roof. Here, I have one of the strongest and highest quality rail systems in the industry, the S5 color guard system. The rails are attached using the S5 clamps. This is a great system because you buy the clamps separately and can get the perfect clamp for your standing seam profile, which can vary across panel manufacturers. Finding the right clamp is important because it needs to be a good fit. S5 has online tools for determining the right clamp to fit your metal roof panel. Once you have all your parts, the clamps get installed first by using a chalk line. Then you install the clamps. Next, you prepare the rails by sliding on one snow clip for each panel and one Versa clip for each clamp. A quick tip is to gently slide these on because if you force them or try to hammer them on, you'll damage the aluminum and they won't slide at all. Now you're ready to attach the rail to the clamps with the provided bolts. Once in place, you slide in the 2-inch color strip of coil to match your roof color. S5 offers a variety of snow retention options, such as the extra heavy-duty X-Guard plus the more decorative snow rail and snow fence, all of which use the same clamp and rail combo for a continuous snow retention system across the roof. Over here, we have an exposed fastener metal roof. For this kind of roof, the options for snow retention systems are similar to that of standing seam. However, this attachment method requires penetrating the metal panels with the appropriate metal roofing fasteners. Here, I have the Snow Defender 4500 for flat purlin and the 1500 for vertical purlins. Both are made from 16 gauge stainless steel and both are powder coated in popular colors. They come individually packaged in bags to protect that coating. The 4500 has an embossed V design for added strength. Remember that these are going to get screwed directly to the flat of the roof panel, which means we need a way to seal around the punctures. And that's where the huge advantage to these snow guards comes in. They have an EPDM rubber sealer that comes pre-attached to the bottom of the snow guard. You simply place them above your purlins and fasten them through the pre-punched screw holes using a number 12 or number 14 screw for maximum holding strength. The EPDM rubber sealer seals between the roof and the snow guard. Polycarbonate snow guards are commonly seen as a low cost option, but with a few drawbacks. They're attached using an adhesive and sometimes fasteners. Polycarbonate snow guards that rely on adhesive alone are really relying on the holding strength of the paint to the metal roof, which can fail over time. How do you quantify the holding strength of the paint anyway? Plus, the adhesive has been known to break down over time because of UV exposure. So it's usually a good idea to use fasteners and not rely on the strength of the adhesive or the paint alone. But even with fasteners, polycarbonate may become brittle over time and break down. So even though polycarbonate snow guards may cost less individually, the cost of the adhesive and the fact that they require more units to reach the needed holding strength makes the system more expensive than some of these mechanically fastened snow retention systems. These are just a few of the many exposed fastener snow guards on the market. But just like the standing seam snow guards, these will be arranged in a staggered pattern along the eave of the metal roof. There are also rail systems for exposed fastener metal roofs that either attach to roof clamps or brackets like this color guard system from S5, or directly to the panel like this rat guard, also known as a snow bar. Something to keep in mind with the rat guard. Though they may seem like a good option because they are inexpensive, they're not recommended for several reasons. Unlike snow guards or the S5 brackets that have a pre-applied butyl sealant or EPDM sealer, 
These rat guards are attached metal to metal. When the metal moves through expansion and contraction, the fasteners can work loose, breaking the seal around the penetration. And the low profile means it's easier for leaves and debris to get trapped against the rat guard, which traps moisture and can lead to staining and eventually paint failure. Because this kind of snow rail can be made on the job site with a portable brake, there are just too many variables to allow for adequate testing, to know how many you need and what is its point of failure. And finally, I don't recommend snow bars like this because without the testing, there is no manufacturer warranty. There is no one to stand behind the product, which means all liability falls on the installer and the property owner. Now that I covered the different types of snow retention systems for metal roofs, let's talk about the differences in materials and quality, because if it's not going to last, you don't want it. A good snow retention system like the Snow Defender and S5 products are going to be made with high-grade stainless steel and rust-proof aluminum. There are also snow guards made with polycarbonate, other less common materials like bronze, copper, and cast iron. Rat guards like this are typically made of galvalume or galvanized steel, the same as the roof. But again, I don't recommend this kind of system because of a lack of testing and warranty. So stick with a good quality stainless steel system and you'll be in good shape. Next, you're going to want to look at the gauge. Heavier is usually better, but not always. A snow guard with an embossed design can withstand more snow than a smooth design with a heavier gauge. So don't just compare the gauge, but look at the load testing. You'll also want to look at the coating. Most times you want to match the roof color. With the S5 color guard, that is as simple as sliding a two inch flat sheet into the channel. Snow guards typically come pre-coated, and this coating can be either wet painted or powder coated. But a high quality powder coating is going to win against wet painting every time, hands down when it comes to longevity. What gives the stainless steel used in the Snow Defender snow guards its protection also makes it incredibly difficult to coat. It requires a special tumble process to prepare the surface. But once properly prepared, the powder coating actually bonds with the steel for an incredibly high quality and long lasting finish that you can't get with wet painted coatings. When choosing the right snow guards for a metal roof, you'll want to look at the engineering, testing, and warranties behind them. The Snow Defender snow guards and the S5 system are specially engineered and have undergone rigorous testing to determine the safe, allowable load per piece in various roof assemblies, using various fasteners, and in various snow load scenarios. This means you don't have to guess how many you need to protect the roof. At snowdefendercalculator.com, Levi's has an easy to use calculator for the Snow Defender line of products that shows exactly how many rows and how many guards you need to effectively protect your roof. And thanks to all of the testing, you get the benefit of a warranty when following the manufacturer's recommendations. A good rule of thumb is, if it doesn't have testing or a warranty, don't buy it. Because without testing, you can only guess at how many you need, and there's no one to stand behind it. So how do I know how many snow guards I need? The Snow Defender snow guards make it really easy with their online calculator at snowdefendercalculator.com. First, you select your snow guard model, whether that's the 4500, 1500, or 6500, etc. Next, you select the roof pitch and how many sides. Then, punch in the roof dimensions and the rib spacing. Lastly, enter the snow load for your area. Hit calculate and it will tell you how many snow defenders and staggered rows you need. It's important that you follow this guidance on the number of rows, keeping in mind that a staggered row means there's still a snow guard beside every rib because the calculations are based on precise testing and failure to follow this guidance can result in overloading the snow guards, which can lead to tear out and having to replace them. S5 has some great tools as well for calculating the right number of parts for your roof, depending on what roof panel, clamp, and snow retention system you're using. You also have the option to request a quote directly from a distributor. If you're using a snow bar like this, there really is no way to know how many rows you need because there is zero data and testing available. So not a good option if you want to make sure you're doing it right. When it comes to exposed fastener snow guards, choosing the right fasteners is just as important as putting the right number of guards on the roof and having the correct placement. The reason for this is that the quality and size of the screw is going to determine what is known as pullout strength, which is the amount of force it takes to lift a fastener out of the metal panels and the purlins underneath. The screw size, usually ranging from number 10 to number 14, and also the thread type is what affects pullout strength. The larger the screw, the greater the pullout strength. 
For this reason, when it comes to holding snow guards in place, it is recommended that the larger size screws are used. We recommend a number 12. It's important to remember that the strength of a snow retention system is first and foremost dependent on the strength of the mechanical bond that the system has to the metal roof. For standing seam, the set screws create that bond. For exposed fastener systems, it is the fasteners that create the mechanical bond. When setting up a standing seam snow retention system that requires clamps, Making sure the right clamps are used cannot be overstated. There's a variety of clamps available for the differing types of standing seam panels, but finding the right one doesn't have to be a challenge. S5 has a great tool for finding the right clamp for your profile. Knowing the exact manufacturer and panel type that is being used is essentially all you need to find the right clamps and avoid force-fitting any profile. Almost as important as choosing the right snow retention system for your roof is using the proper tools. The main tool needed for installing a snow retention system on an exposed fastener roof is a proper drill. Lots of contractors like to use their impact drivers, but the problem with impact drivers is that they use way too much torque and the hammering action can chip the decorative coating off the fasteners. They also make it way too easy to overdrive the fastener and overcompress the washer, which can cause it to break down from UV exposure. We recommend using a drill driver to set the proper torque setting in order to keep the washer tight, but not over tight. For installing snow retention systems on standing seam roofs, a torque wrench is your best friend. You can use your power tool to tighten the set screws and then confirm and further tighten them with the torque wrench to get the proper foot pounds. Whether it's snow guards like the Snow Defender 6500 that have their own round point set screws or rail systems that use clamps with set screws, this will help you easily reach the recommended inch pounds for the set screws to make sure they properly engage with the panel and achieve their full holding strength. If you don't reach proper torque, the snow guards can fail or damage the roof. So make sure you use one of these and follow the manufacturer's recommended torque. Now that we covered the reasons why you might need snow retention and some of the factors to consider when picking the right snow retention system for your project, here are the top do's and don'ts of snow retention on a metal roof. Only putting snow guards above doors. While this may seem like a great way to save money, it assumes the snow load for that guard looks like this, but actually the snow is holding together and acting as a unit. So the real load on that snow guard is V-shaped like this. And chances are that snow guard was not engineered to bear that much snow. And it's the surest way for snow retention failure. So don't just protect the crucial areas and do follow the manufacturer's instructions. Incorrect installation pattern. Way too many times, snow retention systems are being installed with an incorrect pattern. This confusion arises from not understanding what is meant by a staggered row. A staggered row looks like this on a standing seam panel roof with a snow guard or clamp on every rib forming a staggered but continuous row along the roof. And it looks like this on an exposed fastener panel system with a snow guard beside every rib in a staggered pattern alternating from lower to upper purlins. This is the proper method based on the engineering of the snow retention system. But too often the installer skips every other rib and that puts the snow retention system at risk of failure with each snow guard or clamp being asked to retain more snow than it was designed to hold. So don't skip a rib and do follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Using an impact driver instead of a drill. While impacts are great for a lot of applications, they are not recommended for metal roofing fasteners because the hammering action can destroy the decorative coating on the fastener head. With an impact driver, it's also very easy to overdrive the fastener, which can cause the washer to be exposed to UV damage, which in turn can expose the roof to potential leak spots. A drill driver with the proper torque setting is your friend. Don't use an impact and do use a drill driver. Not achieving proper torque. Both the snow guards and clamp systems for standing seam roofs need to be properly tightened to achieve their full engineered holding strength. Too little torque and the snow can drag the guard or clamp down the roof. Too much torque and you risk damaging the panel or snow guard or clamp. That's where a torque wrench comes into play. This allows you to tighten and measure to the precise torque needed. Without it, all you can do is guess about the torque and there's too much at stake to be guessing around. So don't guess about the torque and do use a torque wrench to achieve proper torque. Waiting to install a snow retention system till you get around to it. Waiting years or even a few months to install your snow retention system increases the chance that the colors won't match. 
Plus, the installer might not know or may have forgotten important details about the roof and show up with the wrong parts or not enough. And winter has a way of sneaking up on us before we know it. The snow is flying and the roof is unprotected. Installing the snow retention system at the same time as the roof can prevent a lot of hassle and headache. So don't wait until winter catches you off guard and do install snow retention at the same time as the roof. Snow retention is such an important topic that there is no way to include everything in a single video. But we at Levi's have a number of great resources like an awesome snow guard calculator, installation guides, articles, and case studies to take your education to the next level. Reach out to a Levi's expert today for all questions about snow retention on metal roofing. Thanks for watching.